Hi everybody. I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about dung beetles today. Um, they're probably the most important. Um, I don't want to call them livestock necessarily, but our operation doesn't work very well without them. Um, it's a reason we can avoid drugs. Um, it's a reason that we choose to avoid drugs. Um, it's a reason that we can get higher stocking density on pastures that we've already grazed. Um, and I wanted to start here. This is from May 20th, and I might have posted this in an earlier video about our total grazing. You can see the cattle, and um, here you see a nice sharp line. Um, and you can see that the ground has been totally grazed. This is, again, May 20th. Um, there are a lot of dung pads. In this period of the year, we were running four paddocks a day, and the cattle were tightly, tightly packed together. What I want to do is revisit this in a minute. So now I'm back. This is shot on June 5th, so just over two weeks later. And as you can see, the grass is recovering beautifully. Um, it looks even better now. We don't plan on grazing this until August again. But I want to show you how unobvious the cow pies are. And what we want to see are cow pies gone or really, really dried out with things growing in them. So let's take a minute and dig deep. See those little holes there. So you can see there, there's grass growing up through this already in two weeks. And the main thing is it is completely dried out and desiccated. Here's another one. And you can see the ground there. It is becoming soil. By the time we get back here after a, a 60 day to 90 day rest, um, this is going to be all covered with grass. So this really helps us. Um, because we can graze. Normally cows don't like to graze where they're defecated, um, but in this case uh, they won't know. So now we're moving to another pasture where I'm following right behind the cattle. As you can see what a what a nice, healthy, wet cow pie looks like. Um, this is just several hours old. Um, it's wet inside. One of the things we're trying to avoid are fly larvae who like the moisture. So we would like this moisture to be gone within three days. And we do that with dung beetles. Um, you can see some here. Where you see one, there are hundreds. Uh, dung beetles are nocturnal. There's a fly larvae in this too, but we're not worried about that. There's a great picture of a dung beetle. Um, they're nocturnal. So if you see one in the daylight, um, at night, this will be covered with dung beetles. And here's a nice shot of one. Um, this is called a door um, type of dung beetle. Um, we didn't introduce these. Uh, they just appeared naturally. Uh, and, you know, if we give drugs, we kill the dung beetles. And then that destroys the cow pies, which then leads to more flies, which then leads to more drugs. Um, I learned most of this from reading this book about dung beetles. As I said, they came organically, but I wanted to learn more about it and how to think about managing them. And I thought this was a very, very good book, Dun Beetles and a Cowman's Profits. I also just finished Dance of the Dung Beetles. This is a super deep dive all the way back to ancient Egypt and scarabs and why dung beetles were so sacred um, and literally how they saved the world. Uh, so this person really loves dung beetles and so do we. can see it working. Flies just aren't an issue for us. There are some flies and the black cows have more flies than the others. Genetics play a big role. Keeping the cattle moving away from their dung. Fly larvae take I think five days to come from larvae to become a fly so now we're five days away from that. That's better. And then having those dung beetles quickly within that five days to desiccate that cow pie and make it uninhabitable for any pathogens or 
uh, flies. Not to mention the fact that burying that dung fertilizes our fields. Hope this helps.